It's going to be a good one, guys. I'm pumped. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Where are you listening from today? I know we got somebody from Mississippi in the house. Yes, you do. Hey. <laughs> Where's everybody else? Is Chicago representing? Nobody from Chicago? I am yes, surprised. Mike. Oh, yeah. there we go. I'm, I'm be up from Chicago, Mike. All right, there we go. I was surprised. Y'all on everything. I appreciate that. Very cool. I see a few people just signing in. We'll give them that extra second here. We have Florida. Florida? What part of Florida? Tampa Bay area. Okay, okay. I'm from Orlando originally. That's why. I oh, asked. really? It's nice. been a while. Yeah. My family did it backwards. They started a family in Florida and moved up the East Coast to Baltimore. Most people <laughs> do it the other way around. They just retired. <laughs> Yeah, very cool. Tampa in the house. That's what's up. Well, Sean, yeah. I don't want to hold you up. I know this is going to be sort of a our final slash transitions um, uh, presentation today. So let me let me hand the reins over to you, my friend. OK, sounds good. And Michael, you can see my screen. Not yet. Go ahead. Try it okay. again. I just cut mine off. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Rock and roll. All good. Yeah. All right. Uh, and then I'm going to move these boxes, right? Uh, you should be able to minimize that one, right? Yeah. There we yeah. Go. And then um, hide floating panel. So, yep. I think we're in good shape. Excellent. Yeah, this is the last one, Michael. Uh, if, if you're ready, I will begin. Let's do it. Fire away. Thank you, brother. Uh, and good news, it's not too long, and it's packed with great information, and it builds off of what we have learned. So if you have not attended all of these, um, I think it's a worthwhile endeavor. I think it's a good investment, so you can double your income over the next 12 months using what Global has, has put together. Um and Michael, you have those in the repository. Uh, we'll put them up on the LARC also, but uh, you have all of the previous ones recorded, if I'm yep. not mistaken, correct? Yep. And I'm building yeah. a little landing page for us on our site to have awesome. the slides and the videos and our LARC link. Awesome. Great. So let's talk about this last uh, presentation. Uh, what what life insurance do you write? Okay. And, and will it actually add value? This is not a technical presentation. I would guess to a certain extent it is. Because when you introduce life insurance into the equation, you introduce underwriting. All right. <clears throat> I think you also have a perspective that um, we're almost programmed that life insurance should be at least six digits of death benefit and maybe two, maybe three digits of, of expense. We, we see those select quote commercials and we see people, you know, a 50 year old male can get $10 million of insurance for X amount. And then they, the fine print, they say it's, you know, an annual renewable term that would be doubling in price every three or four years. Um, but it, 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 it's, it is cheaper when you're younger. It's cheaper if you're buying term. But a lot of the clients you're sitting down with, they're 65 and older. Does life insurance still have value? And let's give you a basic landscape of what type of policies you might use. Keep in mind the ask a specialist link through the LARC is all you need to do in, in conjunction with asking the right questions. What I'm trying to teach you here on this last one is how to show value, how to feel positive and encouraged by what you're presenting to these clients as a solution. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and uh, click here. Uh, for the last time, uh, a little bit about myself. I, uh, I think everyone's been on these yet. So if there's anyone new, I am the managing partner of the Integrity Marketing Group. Uh, I do mention that I have a securities license. I think that's important because it gives you confidence. If I'm teaching you as a fiduciary, as someone who can sell stocks and bonds and ETFs and closed-end funds and mutual funds, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm saying, hey, here's, a, here's what I would sell. I would sell an annuity. I would sell a life insurance um, uh, plan when it comes to this specific scenario. 
then that should give you some encouragement. It should give you some motivation. I am the author of the book, Seven Benefits of FIAs for Retirement. Uh, I'm the inventor of the award-winning software, insurancedrip.com. And I currently serve as the Chief Sales Officer for Brokers International. The important notice that we will read every single time, and if you ever give a presentation to your clients, I suggest you add something like this, as gratuitous as it might be. But myself, Global Marketing, Integrity Marketing Group, and all of its affiliates do not provide tax, legal, or accounting advice. This material has been prepared for informational purposes only and is intended to provide and should not be relied on for tax, legal, or accounting advice. You should consult your own tax, legal, and accounting advisors before engaging in any transaction. So there we go. <clears throat> all right. So, Michael, we're going to start out um, looking at the LARC. Uh, and we've gone through the LARC. Uh, I think Wanda did the second training where she showed you what each of the panels in the LARC does and, and how it works and how it functions. But it's very straightforward. And I know I think at least three of your uh, agents took me up on the annuity badge. Uh, and I know they're getting ready for Medicare uh, enrollment season, so I know they're busy, but they took the 88 minutes and passed the quizzes and got their annuity badge, and I sent them a copy of my book, Seven Benefits of FIAs for Retirement. Uh, we talked about the downloading of the financial inventory last week. I thought that was a very good training uh, because it starts to get very tacit. It starts to show you exactly why we're asking questions. And Michael, I've said this before. All, all you agents listening, the best financial inventory or what we call a confidential needs analysis, a CNA, is one that is short. So you got to pack a lot of powerful questions into a short CNA. And uh, that's exactly what we've done. So Global has access to this. You can literally download that financial inventory right at the LARC. And so let's get a reminder that if we download this financial inventory, what are the main elements that we're trying to capture and why? <clears throat> well, let me review them real quick. And I'm going to be very specific, okay? The initial information about the client tells you critical items that you would need in order to figure out what life insurance policy they would need. Now, keep in mind, when I say to figure out, the Ask a Specialist team, the encrypted secure message sent to them, they will do the work for you. You keep going on doing your business, spending time with your family, doing whatever you do, and they will figure it out. But they need this information, okay? Obviously, date of birth is going to tell us the age of the client. I mean, Michael, you would agree, knowing the age of the client is pretty important if you're going to write life insurance, correct? <laughs> Probably, yes. Yeah, <laughs> kind of like rule number one. Uh, spouse, all right? Not everybody you meet is married. Um, and so uh, are they married? Yes. Spouse, let's get the spouse's age and, and other things like height and weight, uh, you know, can, can help. But uh, the, an important one is children. And don't be, don't be uh, shy on asking grandchildren too, right? I think that's really important. If, you, if someone asks, you want to sell me something, Michael, ask me about my children. Ask me about how I think about them. I mean, like, especially my daughter. I've got three boys and then my youngest is a, is a baby girl. Or, well, she's 12 now, but she's my baby girl. And, you know, I will do anything for her. I was dead asleep and she was at the fair last night. It was like 10 o'clock because I just had not had that much sleep over the last few days. And um, she calls and I could have sent one of my older boys. I could have sent my wife. Nope. I got in the car and I went and picked her up at the fair because she wanted to come home, right? And it, it, if you know what people's uh, situation is, their children, and ask them about their children, their grandchildren, and, and we're not saying this just to sell people stuff. We're saying this to really understand a lot of people out there feel the same way I do about my children, and I'm sure about my future grandchildren. They are everything to them. So it makes sense to find out. Uh, the, the, the how many children in their ages, and, and like I said, even adding the grandchildren. Then the next section is extended care. This was really, really straightforward. This is an intentional question that is almost rhetorical. There might be a word for almost rhetorical, but I'm just going to use two words, almost rhetorical, right? Meaning that we know statistically the answer is usually going to be no to the question, do you own a long-term care insurance plan? Because statistically, it's less than 5% of people. And then I think it's very important to ask them, you know, 
knowing that you don't have a long-term care insurance plan, help me out here. Let me understand your situation a little better. Most people have four concerns regarding long-term care insurance. And if you recall, we covered this last week, but they want to remain independent. Uh, they want to have choices, right? Choices where they live, choices where they go. They want to protect their assets. They don't want everything to just be melted down and lose everything that they worked a lifetime for. And, and a lot of people want to stay at home. So tell me a little bit about your concerns. <clears throat> Very important question to ask. And it makes sense relative to why you're there in their house or on a phone call or on a Zoom call. Now we get to the life insurance section. This is what I've preached since the very first webinar, how to double your income, right? How to double your income next year. It all is based on the golden question. And that golden question is highlighted right here. Do you have anything that acts like life insurance? Meaning, are you self-insured, Mr. and Mrs. Smith? Uh, do you have a 401k, an IRA, a Roth, a CD, an annuity, a brokerage account, anything that's going to transfer probate free over to your loved ones if you die? Now, why is it the golden question? Because if they answer yes, great, we can help them out. We unlock an annuity opportunity. If they answered no, great, we can help them out. We opened up a whole life or IUL opportunity. And then the last section is the retirement income. This is a critical section because we have to have an idea of what the uh, in what the what the retirement income looks like. Now, are they still going to be working in retirement for the client, for their spouse? What social security? And I tell you what, social security is probably the number one question you can ask. You know, we 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 talk about social security like it's going to disappear next year. It's not. Uh, as I as I write about in my book, social security will always be there. It is vital. Uh, Michael, if we were in the middle of a war, like we went to war with China or Russia, and I'm just, you know, North Korea, I have nothing against anyone. I'm just saying we, we went to war. Do you think if we hit our military budget spending for that year that we would just quit the war? I mean, it's an uh, honest question. I can promise you they're not going to cut the, the spending. We promise you we're not going to, like, yeah. no, we're doubling down. We're printing more money. It's the same with Social Security. It is the economic fabric of our society. It's never going away. And it is a very important thing. Uh, statistically, it's something like 25%, 30% of retirees, 75% of their income is social security, right? Uh, and then it's something like, you know, 30% or 40% is, is it's 50% of their, of, their, of their income. So it can make up a lot of their income. So we need to know that. So that was a quick refresher on all these elements that we're asking and why. <clears throat> Now let's put these together and I'm going to give you four quick scenarios on insurance that you're writing that you might not think of, or you might have a negative view, right? You might not, you might choose not to sell it because you think, oh, it's, it's not good enough. Please don't make that mistake. You can help people with life insurance. Let's go through four scenarios on how we can do that. Uh, let's talk about Bridget. I think I've used Bridget before. Um, easier to uh, keep the same um, uh, uh, stock image that we paid for. Uh, so we're going to use Bridget at age 65. Although her scenario is a little different this time. So, Michael, here's what I'm finding out. By the way, and I know I'm being almost, you know, silly. How did I find this out? I asked the questions. I asked the questions on the one page a confidential needs analysis, the CNA. So you know what I found out about Bridget? She's single. She's a single mom. Uh, you know, for me, that personally touches the cord. I was raised by a single mom. Uh, she raised three kids. Uh, I was raised by a single mom. She did the best she could. She worked for the Catholic Archdiocese of Seattle. I think she worked there for 820 years. Um, you know, and, and uh, needless to say, not the best paying job working for the Catholic Archdiocese of Seattle as a as a uh, office manager or receptionist or whatever you want to call it. So here we've got Bridget and, you know, she's got two kids. She's a single mother. When we asked if she had long-term care, like I said, it was almost rhetorical. She said, no, I don't have a long-term care insurance policy. Okay. And by the way, we don't overreact to too much. We just, oh, okay. Interesting. Got it. Thank you. Right. And move on. We're, we're not trying to judge people. We're trying to gather information and help people. Bridget does not have life insurance. How do I know? Because I asked her that question. Do you have any life insurance currently, term or whole life? She says, no. 
Okay, do you have something that acts like life insurance? Uh, are you self-insured, Bridget? Do you have a 401k, an IRA, a Roth, an annuity, a brokerage account, something that's going to go probate-free over to your loved ones, over to your two kids when you die? And you notice I keep repeating myself, repeating myself, because these are the simple building blocks I want you to understand. And again, the answer is no, no, right? I don't. But we want to help Bridget, right? Remember the questions on long-term care when they answer no, that section at the bottom of that, or the, 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 um, the area at the bottom of that section, where it says, what are your concerns? See, this struck a chord with Bridget. See, Bridget said she doesn't want her kids, because she's a single mother, she got two kids, she doesn't want them to experience what she did when taking care of her father. And I know some of you all listening to this, I, I know on my wife's side, um, when her grandfather died, you know, her parents had to take care of him. Uh, it was it was a it was a, an arduous task to say the least, right? So they she does not want her kids to have to take care of her, right? Take time from their jobs, take energy from their lives, take you know. Ha she doesn't want them to go through what she went. So that's a, that's a big concern with not having any long term care. So what's the solution? All right, here's a solution. The ask a specialist came back and said, here's the product. We're going to get an A plus rated carrier, Mutual of Omaha. The product is called the IUL Express. If you haven't had that webinar yet with, with Brad uh, from, from Mutual of Omaha, uh, I'm sure it'll be on one of your upcoming webinars. But he does a great job of explaining how this simplified issue, immediate issue, uh, a decision product uh, with no blood, no urine, right? This Index Universal Life product is a phenomenal product because it goes all the way down to $25,000, all the way up to $350,000. But it's the perfect solution for that, that middle of the road. Uh, we need a, a well-priced IUL. Uh, we need something with, with guarantees and with living benefits. And we need it right away. So for $248 a month, she can get $100,000 of tax-free level death benefit. Keep in mind, this is not IUL, so this has increasing cash value with guarantees on that on that hundred thousand dollar death benefit, uh, twenty years or age eighty, uh, and that's if the market never returned anything. It's still going to give that death benefit a guarantee out to age eighty. <clears throat> it also has the critical and terminus, terminal illness living benefit riders. So this is those situations where if you have a critical illness, if you have a terminal illness, or if you can't perform two of six ADLs, you can actually access that death benefit before you die. That's why they call it a living benefit. And she is now taking care of her family. So if Bridget needs long-term care, she can use the living benefits and access her $100,000, like I just said. But whatever she doesn't spend, that's the great thing about it compared to a lot of long-term care plans, is that whatever she doesn't spend passes tax-free to the kids. And keep in mind, like I said before, it builds cash as she pays premiums. So she does have access to tax-free cash for emergencies. Great product. There's a solution. How about Tom? Now, we're going to do two uh, iterations of Tom. The first one is Tom, 65 and unhealthy. All right. So where did we derive this information? Again, I'm being gratuitous. I'm repeating myself. We derived it from the confidential needs analysis. So we found out that Tom has a wife who is 65. Well, we asked about the medications she She's not taking any, or she's taking very few. And Tom, he's, he's, he's a little bit more unhealthy. Who knows what that means? I don't want to go into exact underwriting right now because that can change by carrier, but you get the idea. He's, a, he's unhealthy, all right? <clears throat> he's not on death's door, but he's, he's not healthy. He does not have a long-term care insurance policy. The vast majority of clients you ask are going to answer no to that. He does not have life insurance. And when we asked him the golden question, are you self-insured? He said no. And then from that retirement income section, what did we find out? Tom, are you working retirement? Is your wife working retirement? No. Okay, yeah, that's quite normal. Most people retire, right, Michael? So they don't have to work. Uh, or do you have any pensions? No. Um, all right. How about your Social Security? Well, my Social Security benefit is $2,000 a month. My wife's is 450. That is everything we need to know because we can solve any of Tom's 
uh, problems with, with the loss of income, because let me remind you, and I teach this a lot, you need to remind clients. We just assume that they would know. It's crazy. Many of them do not know. So quiz them, ask them, say, Tom, when you die, do you know how much social security income your wife will retain? And they'll look at you like, I'm not sure. And sometimes they'll guess around or they'll know, but what you're doing is you're bringing it to the forefront. Yes, that's absolutely true, Tom. She's going to take over your social security, which is $2,000 a month. And it's going to go up each year with CPI. However, she's collecting $450 a month. She loses that. She loses $450 a month. And as I've said and repeated over and over again, does that mean that the rent at the apartment or wherever you live gets cut in half because you died? Does the gallon of gas get cut in half? If you had a car payment, does that get cut, get cut in half? The answer is no, right? So here she is losing this valuable income at a time where she's going to need it most, which is probably why, according to the Boston Research of Retirement or the Institute of Research of Retirement, cited that one of six women fall below the poverty line once their husband dies. Here's the solution. Great company, A-rated company, Corbridge Financial. They have a product called Simply Now. Now, Mike, I want to point something out to all the agents. This is a level whole life. People sometimes call it final expense. And if you're talking shop, I'm, I'm fine using the word final expense, but I would, I would, I would volunteer that you, that you get that term out of your vocabulary when you deal with clients. It has negative connotations and it shouldn't. It is a level whole life policy, a level whole life policy. So for this one, <clears throat> for $61 a month, he can get a $10,000 level death benefit. Now this is guaranteed till he dies. If he keeps paying the premium, he'll keep getting the $10,000 and it builds cash value and it has living benefits. But we're looking at it this way. If she's about to lose $450 a month, don't you think that they can find 61 to offset that when she dies? Now, I know what some of you are thinking. Let's look at this. Let's tack this head on. When Tom dies, he can now offset nearly two years of lost income. I get it. Two years. Will she outlive him by two years? Probably. Will she outlive him by four or five years? Possibly. Yes. Probably. Maybe. No one knows. But there is a good chance. But this is where I think agents, Michael, I think they misunderstand that if you can't replace, you know, if you can't give them a million dollars, it's not worth doing. That's not true at all. You know, Michael, if I desperately needed a thousand dollars and someone said, hey, I'll give you 200. Would I say, no, thank you. I told you I needed a thousand. I mean, it's insane. But we think about that as clients and as agents. What you need to understand is the value. Tom, what we're gonna do is, this is gonna provide a tax-free death benefit that if we look at just the replacement of lost income, we're giving your wife almost two years of income replacement. Now, what value is that? What value does that have? Think about that. If you've got a great idea, type, type it in the comments box. What value would it be? I mean, it doesn't pay for 10 years, 12 years, 20 years. It's not a million dollars. But is there any value to getting two years of your income replaced? The answer is an absolute yes. How about this? How about the wife can now sell the house on her terms? She doesn't have to fall late on the mortgage immediately and go into receivership or, or, or fire sale. She can, she can make payments and have you know two years or however long it is to sell the house on her terms. She can cover funeral costs. Uh, she can pay rent if she moves into the family, right? I pay. For, I, I own my mom's house here and about four blocks from us. And at some point, I'm sure it'll drive my wife crazy, but she'll she might live with us, right? Wouldn't it be nice if she could pay a little rent to offset it, even for just purposes of her pride? Uh, and, and how about she wants to go on a dream vacation? How about she's really healthy or she's younger, and he dies in four years? And she says, you know what? I never got to go to Italy. I never got to go to Iceland. I never got to whatever. It's tax-free money she can use any way she wants. So please don't think that because this isn't a million dollars, it doesn't have value. 
Now let's go one step further. This is the second of uh, our final two scenarios. Same Tom, but now he's uninsurable. I mean, you think of the worst thing, like HIV and blood thinners and cancer. But let's say he has stage four cancer. My aunt died. We got to see her last August. She died four months later. Um, but she fought it for a while. She actually lived over three years with stage four lung cancer. And it was torturous. And it was tough. And I, I bet many of you on this call have, have, have seen people who are in that situation. It feels good to be able to offer them something. All right. So we know that, yes, the wife is 65. She's healthier. He does not have long-term care. He does not have life insurance. He's not self-insured. He's feeling pretty down. I mean, it's probably why he looks so dour in this picture, right? Staring at his coffee mug that doesn't have any coffee uh, because he knows he's, he's left his wife in a bad situation. And, and you don't stay married for X amount of years because you want to screw that person over when you die. All right? You want to do the best. And he probably has done his best. We're all dealt different hands. We got to play with the, with, with the cards that were dealt. So here's the solution. Corbridge has something called a guaranteed issue whole life, a GIWL. What is that? Well, it's going to be a little bit more expensive. It's $90 a month for a $10,000 level death benefit. And there is something called an elimination period. So he has to go two years without dying. <clears throat> If he can go two years, 24 months without dying, then the death benefit is in place. He could die, you know, two years and one day, and he's getting $10,000 and he only put, you know, you know, maybe a couple grand into it or, or, you know, less than that into it. But he has to survive that two-year elimination period. There is no health underwriting. You could have any ailment any ailment and you are going to get this policy issue because there's no health writing. And I know what you're thinking. What if, Sean, what if he does die? Tom's really sick. Tom has stage four cancer. Tom has HIV. Tom, whatever. All right. What they do, and this is pretty cool, is that if you die within the 24 months elimination, you get all your premium back plus 10%. So you get 110% of your premiums. How cool is that? You literally get more money than you put in. So worst case, this is a bank account that's yielding, uh, you know, this is bad math because that's not exactly how it works, but it's yielding 5% a year, right? Very, very, very powerful stuff. So when Tom dies, if it's after two years, he can offset nearly two years of lost income. Same scenario. The, he gives her 22.2 .2 months of lost income. And all those reasons we mentioned before, it's valuable. But if he dies prior to that, she at least gets more money than what they put into the policy. Let's go through our last scenario. All right, all these unhealthy people, these single parents, right? These people worried about long-term care. Let's talk about something more cheery. You know, this might be one of your med sub clients and they're doing well. So this is the Daniels. They're both 65 years old. They have a retirement income, right? So drawing from 401ks or pensions or whatever it might be. How do I know? Because we ask the questions, because we use the confidential needs analysis. They have a retirement income of $375,000 a year. Okay, that's sufficient. That's sufficient. They are self-insured. When we ask them the question, do you have anything that acts like life insurance? Are you self-insured? They were very proud to announce that they both have large IRAs. So they have $4.6 million combined. You will run into these people. You just need to know the right questions to ask. They also own four properties outright. They own four properties outright and they have two children. Well, they don't need life insurance, right? Michael, they're in good shape. They, they're, they're set to go. Let's just sell them the med set policy and move on. Absolutely not. <clears throat> Here's the solution. And I'm gonna tell you why. And keep in mind, keep in mind, you don't have to memorize this or know this. I'm showing you what the Ask a Specialist, what Global's backend team working with brokers is going to come up with. So this is the Prudential Pro-Life Survivorship Index Universal Life, right? All right. So it's a mouthful, the Pro-Life Survivorship IUL. So that means survivorship. It lasts for as long as, uh, as, as the last surviving spouse. My wife and I have one in something called an ILIC. 
an irrevocable life insurance trust. Okay, Michael, so uh, these exist. So I guarantee you, I'm going to die before my wife. Um, and then when she dies, it pays out the death benefit. So I want you to look at this. This seems like big numbers, but crack with me here. For $18,000 a year, they get a million dollar death benefit that is guaranteed to age 121. I mean, Michael, I, do you know anyone who's 120 years old? S serious nope. question. Nope. Me either. Never run into it, ever. I think if I Googled who's the oldest person in the world, it's somewhere in Japan and they're 118, you know. So pretty good chance that this is guaranteed for as long as they need it to be guaranteed for. A million dollars, all right? A million dollars. Now, why is that valuable, all right? See, it's valuable because let's just look at the math. If the surviving spouse, let's say the wife outlived the husband, let's say she lived to 95, that's very old. Then that $18,000 she's paying every year times it by 30, that's $540,000. Would you invest $540,000 to get a million dollars tax-free? I would. And the tax-free part is huge. But I want to tie one other thing to trigger something. Remember when I said get people talking about their children? Remember when I said they had four paid off properties? There is a very good chance. And if you go back to our eight reasons, Michael, you remember the presentation, eight reasons why everyone should have a whole life policy. One of them was because there is going to be a reduction in the federal exemption and the state exemptions for death tax. So someone who is 65 who already has a net worth approaching seven, eight, nine million dollars, $10 million, do you think by the time they're 95 and all that money has had more time to accumulate, do you think they could be potentially heading into a situation where they're going to have to pay a state and or a federal um, uh, a state tax? The answer is yes. It's a resounding yes. I want to ask a question. Does anyone know, type it into the comments, does anyone know what the annual gifting limit is per person? You can give, you can give, X amount of dollars per year per spouse. So the wife can and the husband can. And they can give it to, if they have two kids, they can give it to each of the kids. Does anybody know what that dollar amount is per year? 10,000. Good guess. Good guess. A little higher. They said it in Shawshank Redemption way back when, I believe. Did they? Yeah. <laughs> and it's climbed a little bit. It's climbed a little bit. That's when Andy Dupree was getting the, uh, the, uh, the, the trust of the warden, right? Great movie. Um, $18,000. Hey, who was that? Who was that? Pamela. Pamela. Of course it was, because Pamela's right. It's $18,000. This went from seventeen dollars to $18,000. What's my point? And see, you're going to have agent clients that you just, no one brought this to their attention. Don't assume that someone talked about this, right? Someone talked about it. No. Hey, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Daniels. Did you know that you can give each of your kids $18,000 a year tax-free? So it, it does not tax them at all. You can gift it to them and they don't pay any tax on it. So you could give each kid $18,000. Hell, they could give each kid uh, whatever 18 plus 18, I'm bad math, $36,000. Um, but just $18,000. And that goes into the premium of a death of a life insurance policy that is guaranteed to age 121 will pay a million dollars guaranteed. It'll also build cash value and all those things. It also has living benefits, right? But think about that. So now, M Mr. and Mrs. Daniels, you know those four homes? That counts towards your estate tax. So how much money do you have in your IRAs? How much income are you making and not spending? There's a very good chance that by the time you die, the exemptions are gonna be lower and you're going to have to pay money to the state and or the federal government. And you know where the kids are going to get it from? They're going to have to get it from probably liquidating those homes. You don't want that. If you just gifted tax-free $18,000 a year, then you're going to pass on a million-dollar death benefit. If you did 18 to each kid, that's $2 million paid out. That's plenty to cover the estate tax. And one of the things I've talked about is no one is emotionally attached to their life insurance. They want to use it. They want to use it as a living benefit. They want to use it as a death benefit. They want that tax-free income. 
No one is emotionally attached to life insurance, but they are attached to um, having to liquidate an IRA and take a huge tax hit. You ever thought about that? They are attached to having to sell one of the houses just to cover the estate taxes. You know, and let's say the exemption never goes down. It stays at these astronomically high rates. Great. For pennies on a dollar, you know, for $540,000, you just gave all your kids a million dollars tax free. Really, really powerful solution. And one that you might not think of. Here's the deal. You don't have to think of it. Submit every scenario to the Ask a Specialist. Gather that information, like we've talked about, through the confidential needs analysis. Enter it in. And, and you, uh, I'm hoping agents, I'm hoping you're starting to see, oh, this is why I'm asking these questions. This is why these questions matter. And I'm doing it in an appropriate way. I'm doing it in a way that's disarming. And I'm solving solutions, or excuse me, I'm solving problems that they didn't even know they had sometimes. How powerful is that? And we can keep building on this and building on this. All you have to do is go to the LARC, use the resources that Global has set up, and submit it to the Ask a Specialist, and then go do your best to present it. It's that easy. So you want to double your income? Here are the steps on our final webinar here concluding this series. Download the confidential needs analysis. Ask that golden question every single time. Submit every scenario to the LARC. Let them worry about the best interest. Let them worry about what the current rates are and the state rules and the age restrictions and the health underwriting. Let them do the work for you, right? And then if you do that, you're going to complete your goal of writing at least one annuity per quarter and at least one IUL or whole life policy per month. And that is gonna double your income. This concludes everything, Michael. You all have been great. Literally, I think my favorite group to work with. And Wanda, thank you for introducing me to everyone. I wanna take a little time to open it up for questions now. Could you put that the screen back up to the last uh, slide one more time? Thank you. You're welcome. Wonderful presentation. Thank you so much. I'll be putting a lot of this into practice with my clients. Thank you. Thank you, Jacqueline. And hey, as we go into open enrollment, you see how valuable it is to capture the questions. You could always come back in the off season if you're feeling like you're a bit overwhelmed. I know people are putting 70 hours a week into, into uh, open enrollment. But then you could call them back next year, right? Sounds so far. Or call them back in December. Hey, um, Real quick, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Daniels, when I talked to you, uh, I asked you these questions, or uh, Bridget, when I spoke to you, you had mentioned that you didn't have long-term care and you were concerned about your kids going through the same scenario that, that, that you went through. Uh, I have something that might be a great solution for you, right? Does that make sense? So you could log these through, and here's the deal. Michael, we all know that you're gonna succeed to your point of failure. <laughs> and, and what that means is you have a capacity. Some people, it's not very high. They can only tolerate a little. But then other people, whether it's through fear, passion, desire, heck, all three, anger. <laughs> I've been motivated by a lot of things in my career. And I don't take that the wrong way. Um, but I think ultimately, if you care about people, and when I say care about people, you should be last on that list. Do you care about your client? If they, if they literally said, I don't have a long-term care policy and I am concerned about these elements of long-term care, then isn't it selfish if you didn't present something to them? I'm not trying to twist words or, 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 or mind screw anyone. And then what about your family? You know, is, is watching Monday night football more important than this? Is, is, and I go on and on and on and on. You got to spend time with family. You got to have downtime. I mean, I wish I had some, but put yourself last and be motivated. Document these questions. Come up with your own system. You can submit them to the LARC at any time, and then you're ready to go, and, and you can double that income. So uh, any other questions? We did pretty well on time. It's 740. I'm happy to answer any other questions before we wrap up. This is great stuff. Guys, feel free to unmute yourselves. I did give you that ability to do so. 
or you can type in your question in the chat. What's that? Yes, yeah, so hello. I don't know if that was on purpose or not. All of these sessions have been recorded. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Yep. They'll be put on. And where do, and where do we find them? Yep. They'll be put on a landing page on the Global Premier website. So you can have everything all in one spot. Thank you. Um, also, feel free to reach out to our lifestyle support team here. We have a lot of experience. Um, if you're not sure which product's going to best fit a client, um, you can call our 800 number, email our life support at BILTD.com, and any of our life experts, life specialists here can help you too. Good point. Real, real quick question. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm new to the, the game, kind of, as far as life insurance goes. I did make yeah. a case with AP. It was last year um so that's cool um but with the life insurance thing i i hear a lot of agents say that's kind of what keeps them afloat uh with uh aap or just like you know in general um and i heard like like you guys said you guys have uh like the videos on, on the site i'm just trying to go from you know basically i got the license and i need to learn everything I need to know the steps like I'm just trying to hurry up and get you know capable so that I can go out and start knocking on doors or doing whatever I can to get business um is there do I just go to the website or I know yeah my it, is there too but you know this is a new thing I literally I'm, I just changed agencies so I'm like this is all new I'm like kind of by myself in like my upline so I'm just kind of I think that's an excellent question Carlos uh can you still see my screen I'm, I'm yep. terrible with these yep. controls yep okay so here is the Life and Annuity Resource Center that's been set up by Global. So what I suggest is Michael will show you where it's at. He can send it to you. And um, you, can, you can watch the video recordings if you want, because we had a six-part video series, and I go through and teach you everything, okay? Uh, and then when you go here, this is getting your annuity badge. Imagine me in your home teaching you everything I know about how to be confident and compliant in, in, in gaining, uh, in selling annuities, right? It's 88 minutes, right? It's about what my kids spend on an average day watching YouTube. Uh, with, with, you know, but you're going to have a, a certificate and, and a badge that you download and you're going to feel very confident. And then you're off and running. So I teach in those videos how to, how to use the financial inventory and how to ask the right questions. I teach you how to submit to the Ask a Specialist and what your expectations should be and how to link here to either get contracted or to submit an application. So here's the deal. Um, I remember when I got in this industry in 2003, uh, I was dead broke. I'd failed in something that I was doing and I'd failed a lot. Um, you, get, you get good at failing. <laughs> Uh, but but then sometimes you can you you know learn from that and turn things around. And I wanted to get my life insurance and my health insurance license. And so I studied all night, took a three hour rest, went and took my test, got the life portion, came back, took another nap, studied, took a one hour nap, went and took my 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 uh, health right or law or whatever it was the the legal portion of it. And I got my license in in forty eight hours. And here's my point. It's because I was hungry. So you got to ask yourself, are you hungry? This is, if you watched everything, Michael, I mean, we probably have about four hours of videos and I know we got Medicare coming up. I understand. All right. Do you think in the Medicare enrollment season, you'll watch four hours of TV? Do you think you'll watch four hours of Facebook or scroll through or anything like that? And I'm not trying to be that person. You all live your own lives. I mean, I, it's, I love everyone and you do what you need to do. But if you're motivated, everything is here at the LARC and Michael can send you the videos. You invest some time, you're gonna go into it. And my key thing is this, start using that financial inventory when you're in your appointments, because there are some laws that you can't hide a wave sell. You can't go into a med advantage policy and sell them something else. But you can certainly come back a week later or a quarter later and plant the right seeds. And now, now you're out there making $10,000 commissions on an annuity while helping protect someone's retirement because no one ever spoke to them about it before, right? And all these things I showed you, we have that training series. So if you really want to get it, I encourage you. It's all right there. And uh, and you'll feel confident if you go through all my videos. Perfect. 
All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks, yes. Carlos. I have a uh, question. Which one of your series of the six are you, did you go over in more details about the customized brochures break, uh, breaking down the indexing principle? Uh, and uh, once you download it, you know, I, I ordered some uh, of the brochures, but I don't know where they came to because I've already paid for some. Yeah, if you don't see them, uh, tech, email Wanda or email support, and we'll make sure we track them down. They sh they take just a little bit, to, but they they put your image and everything. They print them and they drop ship them right to you. So if you haven't seen them yet, uh, let me know. I'll give you two answers for that. On the Wanda, was it the third webinar we did the seven benefits of FIAs for annuities? Yep. Is that correct? That's okay, correct. so that would be the one to watch. I literally go through each of those benefits and I explain it in detail. And I also show you a website, which you can just look at this right now. Oh, we got, all right, they were doing an update to this. It'll be up here soon. But uh, if you've got the um, the video, seven benefits of FIAs for, uh, for uh, retirement, then that will explain the brochure and you'll go in loaded for bear. I believe it was the third webinar we did. Thank you. You're welcome. I hey, a great name, place. by the way. Everett is where I grew up. It's uh, north of Seattle. It's kind of like the armpit of Washington. But uh, I, I've always wanted to name one of my kids Everett. My wife, my wife didn't let me go. That's a beautiful country. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. It is. I have a question for you. Uh, yeah. I have a customer is fifty four years old lady and is on early Alzheimer's. Uh, she get disability insurance about. One thousand dollars. Is do you know what kind of coverage we I can offer her? Yeah, um, I don't offhand, but just submit that to the ask a specialist. So, I, like, do it right now. Like when you get off the call, click on the ask a specialist, and if you're it, so she doesn't have any, she she's not sitting on a two hundred thousand dollar IRA or anything like that. Correct. You're looking at life insurance. Correct. She doesn't have anything, uh, disability, life insurance, or any, yeah. anything yeah. at all. Which is very common. So, Peter, let's see how we can help. When we click on life, fill out all this information. It's all encrypted and secured. Okay? If you have uh, anything that you, you, you know, these comments are critical. These comments. Put as much as you can here. Just check the box that says you're giving us permission to release information to uh, to uh, global, right? Because you're an independent agent technically, so you have to give them permission. Notice it says this. This information is will solely be used for the purpose of advising on the product for the client. It will not be sold or shared with any third parties for the use of leads or other marketing purposes. So it's very it's secure. And then just hit submit. And they're going, the back end, what global's put together with BI, they're going to look and find based on her age, state, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. They're going to find the best product for it, and they're going to give you some insight on why it might be helpful. Hey, here's how it works. Here's why it might be helpful, and then you can go with a servant's heart and say, "Here's what I discovered. Um, here's why it would be beneficial." And then guess what? She might say yes. She might say no. Either yes. way, you did your part. You can't control the outcome of other people. Right? I I spent a lot of my life trying to control other people. Uh, and it stresses me out. And now I'm trying to spend the latter years of my life learning how to let certain things go and live a little bit more stress-free. But I know in my heart, I did the best I could. Does that help, Peter? Thank you very much, yes. You're welcome. More questions, Sean. What, yeah. when I run across a lot of clients now that nowadays by doing these uh, workshops that are... Uh, municipality or state workers that have pensions, you know, several pensions. Yep. So these people are more, I believe, to say, more conscious about, you know, uh, I believe more conscious about retirement. So that 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 do that needs analysis of uh, assessment that you have with them, and just ask, them, hey, just take a few minutes to uh, fill this out and see if there's anything additional that we can help you with. You know, because I know their pension's supposed to be there. A lot of them don't have Social Security, but those will be good, good individuals for this type of platform. Correct? Correct. Absolutely correct. And and here's why: because when we go through this, 
you know, let me just point out a couple of things, right? Um, you're there most likely for a Medicare supplement plan or a Med Advantage plan. You know, are you enrolled in A or B? Or maybe that's how you met them. Maybe you're doing a, an annual review. But let's point out a couple ones. Do you have a long-term care insurance plan? Uh, no, I don't. Okay, well, please tell me, you know, and I'm, I'm, you know what your some concerns are, are. All right, let me ask you this, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Uh, uh, do you own any life insurance? You know, whole term of whole life. Now, something you own. Right. And they said, well, no, because when I worked for the fire department, I always had three times my salary. Right. And you'll find that. But now they don't have it. The fire department doesn't keep it with them when they retire. It's not portable. Right. So, OK, you don't own any life insurance. OK. Um, so do you have anything that acts like life insurance? Are you self-insured? Do you have a 401k or anything like that? They say, no, I've got a pension. I have a pension, but I, I don't have this. All right. OK. Well, tell me about that. Are you going to be working in retirement? No, I'm not going to be working. Is your spouse going to be working? No. Uh, you said you don't get Social Security because of, you know, SERS or PERS or, you know, uh, the different qualifications, or maybe they, one of them has Social Security. But how much is your pension, right? And they say, okay, it's 4,500 plus, plus CPI, right? And so I would put pension adjusts annually with CPI, all right? Uh, does your spouse have a pension? Uh, yes or no? Let's say no, just for simplicity. See this transfer one? This is a big one. Does your pension transfer? Uh, you know how many, I'm from Seattle. Uh, you know how many Boeing workers I've worked with? They get to choose. Do you want half of it? Do you want all of it? But then you take a reduced amount? Like there's no, there's no like best answer. It's kind of like a guessing game, right? So yes, it transfers, but transfers at 50% of uh, benefit. Uh, and I'm making this up, but does this make sense? Everybody, like, like this is the sort of thing you're going to be doing. You send that off, there's a very good chance that they say, oh, you know what we could do is we could get them a life insurance policy on the, on the primary that offsets the other two, $2,250 per month for the spouse. So when they die, it's going to give them this. And it also has living benefits because I noticed that they don't have a long-term current insurance plan. And if you, if anything you don't use, they said they had three children, it can pass on to the children. Do you see how you put the information in and now it, they piece together a solution and you're exactly right. Situations like that are right for uh, a, a solid, you know, guaranteed issue or a guaranteed uh, UL or IUL uh, with strong cash value. What if those individuals are single? Um, it, okay, then, then do they give to charity? Do they want to pass on to kids? Do they have no kids? Hey, every once in a while, you'll run into someone who has no kids, no spouse, no care. They, you can ask them, but what do they want to do? You, do you want to do you want? Is there any charities that you have, right? Anywhere you would like to send money when you die? Nope. Then then you can't help them. Move on to the next one. Conserve your energy. Help them with their Medicare supplement plan, and move on to the next one. Thank you. You're welcome, Everett. Got a couple more minutes. Any final questions to wrap up our series? There's one there in the chat that says. Somebody's new to insurance. Do you see that one? No, I lost my control bar. I made it go away. Now I don't know how to make it come back. Hit the escape key on your um, keyboard. Damn it, Michael. I, I, if, 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 I, if, I, if I didn't know better, I'd hire you, man, because like, uh, I think that's <laughs> illegal. But um, I, I yeah, might be so here's the question. question. So An Anthea, oh, go ahead, Juan, did you want to answer it? Yeah, they're asking about being new to insurance, having their life and health license. Do they need an annuity license to market these products? Um, for the life, you would just need the life license. Um, if it's a like long-term care annuity or a life long-term care product, then you would need both your health and life license. Um, for the annuities, you just need your life license. There is annuity CE that is required in many states because of the best interest and suitability um, regulations. But that's CE. So you'd want for the annuities, you'd want to have the life license and then your state annuity CE. 
And let me tell you, the like the the, the CE and the uh, product specific, uh, it, it's Anthea. So the product specific training that you have to do on an annuity website. Uh, I have a a nine year old uh, poodle, and poodles are pretty smart. So you know, I, I understand that it's not a schnauzer or something that that might not or or you know what the uh, hopefully no one has what are they called the chihuahuas? That might be the dumbest dog in the world, right? But my poodle could pass these little tests that they have. They, they, they're that easy. So like Wanda said, and she's so particular and accurate, um, you do have a little CE and a little product training you have to do. Like, it's like a brain shark. You just click through and answer the obvious questions and you know, in 10 minutes you're done. Um, but you basically just need to have a life and health. And I would strongly recommend that if you all just did the health because you're going to focus on Medicare, you are missing out. You need to have the life. And if for whatever reason you just have the life, you need to have the health. All right. There's I think a, there's we got one it. On the, sorry, there was one just a minute ago on the uh Oh, on the Q&A. Q &A. I see it yeah. now. Yep. Yeah. What if they are single? Yeah. Hey, single, do they have kids? Single, do they want to give it to charity? Uh, single and they don't care. Uh, sometimes I wish that was me, uh, you know, like 2% of the time, um, then move on. Don't sell them anything and move on to the next one. Great questions, by the way. Great questions. All right. That sounds like we got them all. Michael, I appreciate it. You've been, uh, I mean, Wanda, let's, let's be real. Michael's been the best host we've had. Um, he's done been tech awesome. support and he's been prompt. And uh, and he does a great job. Uh, sometimes, Michael, I do a little uh, role play. I ask people questions and I can tell the host is maybe, you know, gone to go get some uh, a bagel or something. Right. So uh, <laughs> I appreciate you hanging in there and listening to all this, brother. Of course. No, this has been great, guys. You've been tremendous co-hosts and presenters. And I really appreciate you guys putting all this together for our people, because as you can tell from all these sessions, we just keep getting more people interested and they're all from different paths in their business. Some people who just got their license. Some people don't have an upline. Some people have been doing this for a while. And like I get texts during this presentation. Mm -hmm. Somebody was like, I needed this. And that's awesome. That's awesome. great. I love that because Tony and I put together a lot of presentations that we don't know if it hits or not. We have no idea until right. we get the feedback and from the text messages and the interaction from the people listening on this call. That's exactly what we need to hear guys. So I'm so happy that this landed for you guys and, and Sean and Wanda and your whole teams really appreciate you guys putting this together for us. This has been excellent. Well, we appreciate it. If you all do any annual conventions, let me know. I'll be happy to come out and visit everybody in person, uh, but go out and crush it this annual enrollment. Get that and uh, get that uh, confidential needs analysis downloaded or or save it so you can digitally type it in and start stocking away and submitting to the ask a specialist these uh, these uh, uh, opportunities that you have to protect people and and make more money. So thank you everyone, I appreciate it, Michael. Thank you so much, Wanda. Thank you. Yeah, thanks everyone. Fantastic, guys. Let's give them a final yeah. woohoo and round of applause. A couple of snaps and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. I love it. I love it. That was awesome. Excellent, job, excellent care. stuff. Talk to show. Guys, no if you need help with this, I'll put it online. I'll send you guys the chat via email and stuff. And if uh, you want to talk about this further on the mastermind session, we do that every Wednesday at nine a.m. Eastern. It's an open forum Q and A, so anybody can talk about anything. And we'll see you guys on there. Have a great day. Take care. Thank you.